When dealing with mystical experiences, we know that many people have been there, in the jaws of a strange scene that enwraps and bewilders the mind, either through substances, meditative states, occultly, or dropped on you without warning striking in a sense of terror, some real nightmare fuel. But with all these things, there are a few points, trends, and commonalities to discuss. Why is it that a person wakes up one day saying something like, I am God, or I am your savior, or even I've befriended some powerful spirit? The answer is pretty obvious, but was the experience they had a faulty one? Rather, was the interpretation of the experience actually valid? I mean, what even is valid? I'll go out on a limb and say, if it doesn't help the person develop formally, then we can suspect something is missing. Ignoring the specific methods of reaching the experiences, what's the big deal? On one level, having a personal first-hand mystical experience is a stage of revelation. It's a point of development. But in reality, it's more of a crossroads. I say it's a crossroads because the experience is flatly one thing, itself. What you do with it is everything that actually matters. Is it going to be beneficial for you? As in, will you take out what's palatable and worthwhile? Or run with a misguided idea that does nothing beyond bolstering and validating your current worldview? With exclamations of, I have become, or I have always been. It's a little ridiculous, because it does nothing but rest the mind in laziness, or couch the ego in a comfort it will never really want to leave. And you may have noticed that most of these more problematic results from mystical experiences use one word quite often, if not most of the time, that I. Yeah, that's right. The biggest problem in our lives is often ourself. But we're also the ones decoding the signs and symbols of the experience. So we have to develop a methodology, a process, if you will, to actually get that gold out of a dull rock. It's a, a skill and a valuable one. With all that being said, my name is River, and with stage set, I welcome you to the Nimiton. So let's form a process. It isn't perfect, but it's a foundation that each of us can work with and tailor to our personal style. Three steps is all we're gonna need. They're gonna be documentation, symbols and relevance, and lastly, the big picture. To start, a mystical experience, no matter how grand or amazing, goes through an imperfect filter, which as you might have guessed, is your brain. So most things aren't as they are. They're fragmented in imaginations, warped by understanding. Sometimes the most immensely important detail is even overlooked because that seahorse seashell party in the corner just didn't feel all that important. So what do we do? Well, first and foremost, write the thing down. Recollection is a weak method of analysis. Even eyewitness testimony is pretty garbage. I mean, how many occult, witchy, whatever books tell you to have a journal? Dream journal, goal journal, I don't know, calorie journal, just anything. Write it down. Make a piece of evidence for yourself to then detach from and look at critically without all the all-striking feelings and extravagant ideas. It'll allow an ease of reference as you develop to then refer back to as the messages actually unfold. The thing is, most experiences aren't actually formally understood when we have them. They often don't seem like they're even meant to be. They're like puzzles eagerly waiting to have the pieces put together. Running with that puzzle metaphor, what about those pieces of that puzzle? Or we should say, what about all those little symbols and concepts that show up in the experience? Here's the fun part. You might remember how we talked about the filter of experience being your brain and your frame of reference. Now we have to acknowledge how symbols are perceived not just by going and looking them up online or in books, but through careful notes of interrelation. Like how does the symbolism relate to your scope and worldview? Not that you need to make the symbol a part of that frame of reference, but to try and shift our own perspective through understanding those minute details. Treat an experience like learning about your own mind or yourself, not learning about spirits or some other metaphysical space. You can do that part later. 
But remember, we're trying to learn something. We're trying to realize something about where we are and what needs to be done to go further. And with all that covered, we can get some closure. The big picture is when the pieces fall into place, when the puzzle is set right and everything makes sense. If you had an experience that was a self-confrontation and learned from it, then that's fantastic. That's actually the entire basis of spiritual alchemy and its practices. Or if you had an experience beyond your own mind that will be written down and forgotten, only to hit you with a blast of revelation in a couple of years, no harm done, because that's just as worthwhile. Let's do a recap. Just write it down, analyze the pieces, symbols and such, then get some context, look at how they relate to you, how they relate to each other, and at that point, when everything comes together, you get the final line, which is the big picture. Before we head out though, I want to share two things. The big moments in our lives don't have a solid answer to summarize them. And many times, our shifting perspective will pull something new from it. So don't treat it so firmly. It's organic. It's moving. You know, moments ebb and flow like anything else. Now the other point, did you notice what the real problem of mystical experiences is? It isn't just ego or something so blunt. It's about willing to be critical of yourself. It's about putting the time in to look for points of development. I mean, honestly, people hate doing that. Most of us want to be right all the time. No mistakes, all perfection, and we come out screaming, I am that great being or that remarkable soul chosen to be amazing. But no development comes out of that, no progression. It's a soft couch for us to hang our head and think we're perfect little angels. But in the mystical scene, there's always work to be done. And even if we don't do that work, the world's going to keep on turning. Anyways, I want to thank you for joining me. This has been River at the Nimiton, and I'll see you next time. And as always, a massive thank you to my friends, patrons, and supporters. I appreciate you more than you know.